to the day the Earth turned vertical. All my months of endless research had finally led up to that one inescapable conclusion. It was finally going to happen, and there was nothing anyone could do about it. The place is a nondescript library in some surely state-funded university somewhere called the National University. A young professor, Bob Howards, is studying a globe and volumes of textbooks. He calls with a grave tone in his voice to his colleague, Roland Bupke, and explains in hushed tones, as they are being reminded to stay quiet because they are in a library, that by the end of that day, due to some unexplained occurrence in the gravitational field around the Earth, the forces of gravity would shift, causing the Earth to no longer resemble a sphere, but instead it'd be a flat plane perpendicular to a new gravitational field, which will cause everything. Bupke at that moment interrupts Bob's explanation and says, you mean we'll all slide off the Earth? And he says, yes. And Bupke says, no! Shh, says the librarian. young men know that they are faced with an incredible challenge, not simply to solve the problem and hopefully save the Earth, but also to enlist the help of other experts. Remember, this is years before the internet. Bob leads his colleagues to the only person he believes will trust his findings. The professor. He finds the professor attending to his office hours, knocks on his door. What I'm about to say to you, sir, you're going to find quite incredible. In less than six hours, the entire world will turn vertical. Preposterous! Sir, I'm telling you, I've done the research, it's gonna happen. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous. None of the computers are indicating anything. Sir, this is the indication. I'm telling you, in less than five hours, the entire world will no longer resemble... Less than five hours! The professor is not buying it. This only frustrates young Bob, because he believes in the grim certainty that he has discovered. He raises his voice. Professor seems to becoming, be becoming concerned about Bob's behavior and says we're going to have to meet with the board of directors and talk about you and your strange behavior of late. Bob says, I'm trying to save the world. Oh, says the professor, you're trying to save the world. How many people for centuries have tried to save the world? How about all those people who go to the mountaintop and wait for it to happen? It will never happen. We will talk to the board of directors tonight. All right, Professor, says Bob, but I'm going to do something about it. Yes, well, we're going to be keeping our eyes on you. Good day, Professor. Good day. Young Turks, now numbering four, go to Roland's house, have a couple of beers, and discuss their dilemma. They try calling radio stations, news programs. No one's believing the story and the clock is ticking. Fortunately, in the quiet solace of a basement bar, the scientists are able to recall the studies of one Professor Dieter Lichtenstein, who proposed a theory a few years back that was roundly debunked and scowled and scoffed at by the scientific community at large, Dr. Lichtenstein proposed that gravity could be controlled by man-made devices called hold knobs, just as other forms of other areas of perception could be controlled, such as color. Uh, and he did significant work 
in the uh, ancient city, uh, Vietnamese city of Hue, which if you look at the, uh, the way it's spelled in English, actually spells Hue. This being his first clue, he continued to explore around the earth and discovered there were nexus points where certain magnetic structures could be constructed and manipulated that could actually bend space-time and manipulate the gravity field. Now these men at this point don't know if this is a naturally occurring phenomenon or not because Lichtenstein also proposed that this could occur spontaneously in nature. They decide immediately they must contact Professor Lichtenstein. They know that the location of the vertical hold knob, the nexus point that would control and hopefully prevent this terrible event that is impending, it is their grave concern that this location be nearby. Time continues to tick by as they wait on the phone. It has to be somewhere close by, says Bob. Otherwise, we'll never get there in time. Yes, Professor. Please, please, you must tell us the location of your expedition. Bob sullenly hangs up the telephone. His colleagues look on, pale, expecting the worst. Bob looks up and says, it's in Lebanon. The Middle East? New Jersey. Bob drives a nine-year-old sandalwood-colored Chevy Malibu. The lads hop in and head for Lebanon, New Jersey. They arrive at the first spot that the Professor Lichtenstein directed them to, but find nothing but ruins. They feel that the Professor might be leading them on a wild goose chase. Using one of the first cellular phones ever developed, Bob calls Professor Lichtenstein once again. Professor, we urgently need the proper location of this vertical hold knob. The Professor gives in and gives the proper location. The men point to the far hill and say it's roughly that away. But they can barely drive. The earth is shifting. Bucky, look out! Ah! Oh my god! Bucky falls. Suddenly, there's a newly formed cliff. Looking down, and you have to picture this now. Off to the horizon. Behind you is no longer behind you. Now it's below you. If you fall, you fall off the earth. And there looms the vertical hold knob. Inch by inch, against ever increasing gravity. Up the spidery metal tower, atop which rests the giant hold knob. And with his last ounce of strength, Bob turns. And slowly, the world begins to realign itself. Buildings, redwood trees that were ready to topple bend back at the last second. Oceans settle. Everything returns to the horizontal. Of course, even in this moment of happiness, Bob realizes, well, this phenomenon still exists and these control levers are still out there. And what was uh, Professor Lichtenstein really up to and why was he so evasive? Now the world may be safe for today, on this day that the earth turned vertical. But who knows what might be in store for the earth on some other day.